All right, let's go and check on the latest madness in the public school system, shall we? Um, always a fun topic. I, I point you to an article in the Daily Wire yesterday. Headline is drag queen Jessica Lahore visits middle school after backlash school issues partial apology. Um, and the article says in part, after backlash from the community, a school district in Colorado has apologized to parents for not notifying them in advance that a drag queen who goes by the name of Jessica Lahore, visited the school for career day. The district said it would not apologize, however, for inviting the drag queen to talk to the middle schoolers, a decision the school made in the name of inclusiveness and diversity. Um, Adams 12 five-star school district admitted that, a uh, spokesperson for the school district admitted that the staff of Rocky Top Middle School should have notified parents in advance about what they knew would be a controversial event, um, which is the visitation of Jessica Lahore, who dressed which is not his Christian name, I assume, who dressed in drag. Um, he spoke to four different classes of sixth to eighth graders, read a book on bullying, and answers, answered questions about negativity and hate. Lahore said that uh, he, you know, he spoke to a bunch of classes. They asked great questions. He also said this. He said, there were a lot of kids interested in how I could have the confidence to go out looking the way that I look, which is, um, I, I hate to tell you, Mr. Lahore, I... I I don't, I think that may have been a, a bit of a backhanded compliment. Um, when you go to someone and you say, what do you think of my outfit? And they say, I mean, it looks like you got a lot of confidence dressing like that. I, I don't think that's a compliment is what I'm trying to tell you. Lahore um, dresses as a woman professionally, a, a job that the drag queen says involves traveling around the country, working six days a week. Um, the spokes... The spokesman for the school district said that parents should have known in advance who was going to be speaking, and that didn't happen in this particular situation. Parents just needed to have more info and context about what was going to be talked about and some background on this individual, and they weren't given that information. Um, the principal of the school also apologized, but apologized not for telling parents. Didn't apologize for the event, apologized not for telling parents. That's the only thing they're apologizing for. Lahore himself said uh, the, the, his message to parents is, I'm not telling your kid to go off and become a drag queen. I'm telling them to have the conversations because it will come up in life. Well, sir, um, l l let me just uh, say this as delicately as I can. It it's not your job, sir, to tell my kids anything. Do you understand that? It's not your job to tell anyone's kids anything. It's not your right to try to indoctrinate other people, uh, other people's kids into your way of thinking. And actually, um, you say that this conversation comes up in life, but really for most people, it doesn't. For most people, this conversation, they never have to talk to their kids about drag queens because it never comes up. It only comes up when people like yourself bring it up. If you wouldn't bring it up, it would never come up. Um, all right, let me just um, let me just make a few points here, if I could. First, we we should stipulate that this is not an unprecedented thing. This is part of a larger trend. This effort to push drag queens on kids has been going on for a while. The, the overall effort to promote deviancy to children has been has the, the left has been doing that for decades, of course. But recently, they have really focused in on this specific project of getting drag queens and little kids together. They're very obsessed with that. So they've got the drag queen story hours and everything. They want to get drag queens and they want to get little kids. And they want to get them together. It's a very strange, very bizarre thing. But the, the left is, um, th this is one of their, their new uh, and most favorite methods of indoctrination. And why do they do this? What's the point? Um, I mean, keep in mind, again, just to emphasize, this drag queen was at the school for career day. Career day. As if any parent in their right mind wants their child to become a drag queen as a career. And I know when I say that, you know, I, I, I know what I just said is, would be considered controversial. Or at least I, what I should say is a lot of people would pretend that what I just said is controversial. What I'm saying is no parent in the right mind, almost no parent, wants their kid to become a drag queen. And then, now you might start typing furiously and say, well, you're a bigot, how dare you say? Yeah, except that you know that I'm right, don't you? 
So I think 99% of us, we, that's, that's the interesting thing about these kinds of conversations, that 99% of us agree in our heads. We know we all feel the same way because we're normal. Of course, we don't want our kids to become drag queens. Of course, we don't want that. You want your kid to become a, dr- a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, a, 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 you know, a, a, that's what you want. You want your kid to have, to have kids and be a parent and a, and a spouse. And that's what you want for your kid. You don't want them to be a drag queen going around the country, calling, them, calling themselves a whore dressed in, in, uh, in, in makeup and dress. That's not what you want for your son. Nobody does. But you feel like you have to pretend otherwise. So 99% of us agree, but over half of that 99% think they have to pretend they don't agree. And what I'm telling you is you don't have to pretend. It's okay to be normal. You're a normal person. You're a normal parent. You don't want that for your kid. That's normal. That's healthy. That's loving. And it's okay to be normal and healthy and loving. So just admit it is what I'm saying. I think with so much of this stuff, with the, especially when it comes to the really fringe, radical um, methods and strategies and, and uh, messages of, of the left, almost none of us really agree with that stuff in our minds. When the left come and, comes and says, oh, you know, a man can be a woman if he feels like one. 99% of us, we know that that's nonsense. That's crazy. We know that. So just admit it. You're allowed to say it. And I'm not saying you're allowed to say it because I give you permission. I'm saying you're allowed to say it because the Constitution gives you permission. Because God gives you permission with your free will. All right. Um, but they say, so, so, you know, what's the reason that they give for doing something? Well, they say it's about fighting bullying. But we don't, obviously, we don't need a drag queen to tell us not to bully. Anyone can tell you that. A drag queen has no special anti-bullying expertise. In fact, this guy who now goes around in dresses and makeup and wigs and calls himself Lahore, he pretty clearly never learned how to deal with bullying. He's basically the last example you want. Okay, show the kids someone who was bullied in school and then became an astronaut, a doctor, an engineer, um, a healthy, normal person. Show them that person. A CEO, you know, a, 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 Don't show them someone who was bullied and now spends his life doing this. Obviously, this person has suffered uh, trauma and challenges in life, and we all have challenges in life, but they never discovered a healthy outlet for it. So this is the last example we should want to put in front of our kids. Also, when it comes to bullying, I think there's a deeper reason um, why they bring in a drag queen to share this message. Because what they're trying to tell our kids is, If you see a man carrying on this way, if you see a man acting in a clearly outrageous, unhealthy, perverse way, you shouldn't treat him any differently or act as though he's engaged in anything strange. So this is an effort to normalize perverse behavior. They call it anti-bullying. That's not what it is. It is normalization. Because it's not bullying for a person to see um, this, this, this guy dressed this way prancing around, um, it's, it's, it, there's nothing bullying about noticing that and thinking, well, that's abnormal. That's strange. That's not right. That's not bullying. Obviously, bullying is never okay. It's never acceptable. But it's also true that Mr. Lahore, um, he's acting strange. What he's doing is not normal. It's not healthy. It shouldn't be treated as though it is. If my kids saw something like that and they said, well, that's weird, you know what I would say? I wouldn't say, oh, no, don't, we, we, we don't call that weird. No, that's, that's normal. That's, that, that, that's, that's great. That's, I would be so proud of you, son, if you did the same thing. No, I, I wouldn't tell my kid. You know what I would say to them? Yes, you're right. That is weird. Now, we don't call him weird. Okay, we don't say that about people. We don't insult people. But what he's doing, how he's behaving, that's weird. You're right. Now, we don't be unkind. We won't be uncharitable. We won't be abusive. Um, we won't be mocking, but yes, that's weird. We should have sympathy for this person. He's very troubled. He's obviously a very troubled person, but you're right that what he's doing is weird. That's what I would tell my kids. That's what I have told my kids. 
And I know, I know the left hates to hear that. They say, they, that, oh, you're, I mean, you're, you're raising your own kids how you want? How dare you? Yep, that's how I'm raising my kids. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm raising my kids to find that kind of thing weird. I'm telling them it's weird. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Because they're my kids. And I can raise them, not you. Um, so, you know, this guy, what, what, he, what he's insisting is that we pretend his whole routine is totally normal. It's not. Um, we shouldn't have to go along with it. And, you know, if I... There, there's a certain amount of pointing and staring that you clearly have earned if you go out and, uh, and, and carry on this way. If I, if I strap a pineapple to my head and then walk outside and go to the store or something, and people point and stare and say, that guy's got a pineapple on his head. I can't say, well, how dare, you're bullying, stop bullying me. How dare you notice this pineapple that I've strapped to my head and then walked outside of the house specifically so that you would notice the pineapple. I mean, when you dress in an outrageous, ridiculous way, people are gonna notice. And that's the whole reason that you're dressed that way. So don't pretend like you're being victimized when you're getting exactly the reaction that you want. Um, by the way, even if this was an actual woman dressed like this and calling herself Lahore, my reaction would be very similar. And I would certainly say that that woman should not be in a school. That's my other problem with this drag queen stuff. I don't know why haven't feminists spoken up about this? Um, these guys are making a mockery of femininity. They're appropriating femininity and making it into a joke, a spectacle. How in the world can you say that it's inappropriate for a white woman to wear like a Native American headdress, but it's perfectly fine for this guy to, to, to dress like a female character from some weird Tim Burton film and call himself Lahore and then portray womanhood that way? How is the one appropriating, reductive, and exploitative, but the other isn't. I mean, this fella, when, when, when he dresses that way, what he's saying is, this is how I see women. He calls himself Lahore, he dresses in the ridiculous outfit, and he's saying, this is, to me, this is what a woman is. Um, that's offensive. I mean, you should be offended by that. I don't want my daughter to see that because I don't want my daughter to think that that's what a woman is. He's making a mockery of womanhood and he's using it as a gimmick. I mean, think about that. He's dressing up as a woman and calling himself a whore. How are the feminists not all over that? Um, how is that any different from a from a you know a, a guy dressing up in a ridiculous Native American costume and calling himself, you know some uh, some slur for Native Americans. I mean, how, what if a guy for Halloween dressed up in Native American costume and painted his face red? Well, we would say, well, that's terribly offensive to Native. Amer so 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 how is the, how is it? Any, this is exactly the same thing. Second point I want to make. Um, this is not the first time that I'm going to say this. It's not even the 100th time. It, it, I'll say it a million more times. It won't be the last time. But I think it needs to be said once again that this is, this is what public school is, folks. Th th this is how public school operates. This is the point of public school. Now, I know that not all public schools are going to invite drag queens for career day. Uh, I think we, we may have a few more years before that becomes the norm. But I'll tell you what is the norm. The norm is the schools making parenting decisions for you. The schools deciding what sort of person they want your kids to be and then working to turn them in to that kind of person without your input, without your consent. That's not only how public schools operate, that is why public schools exist. The government has a public school system so that they can shape the next generation of people. That's the point of, of the public school system. It's not about just teaching. It's about shaping, forming, molding, guiding, instilling values. And um, those values are going to be the mainstream secular values of society. So all you need to do is look at the mainstream secular values in society and decide, is that 
what I want infused into my kid's head for seven hours a day, five days a week, nine months a year for the next 13 years. And it's not like I have no dog in this fight, by the way. It's not like I, you know, it's easy for me to be anti-public school because I don't have kids. I do have kids. I have three kids. The oldest are five. So our decision to not do public school has led to many difficulties and challenges for us already. And we're still very early on. So I get that public school is easier, cheaper, and all that. I mean, it's, it's such an easy decision to make. And there are so many practical advantages to it. I definitely acknowledge that. But and I, and I acknowledge also that there are still people who, who really, they have no other choice. If you're a, if you're a single parent, uh, for instance, well, what do you, what, you know, and you can't afford private school, um, then you, what are you going to do? You, re, you really have very few options. So I, I understand that. But for those of us who feasibly, plausibly could have any other option, I think we really need to consider those options because This is public school. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter how you approach it, they are going to want to parent your child and turn your child into the sort of person they think your child should be. Um, Education is, and and, and, and I'm not saying that, well, the the, the public school there, they're so biased in the, the problem isn't that they're biased in their education. Education is by nature biased because education by nature is not just about passing on information in a sort of detached, objective, robotic way. Um, in education is about making people. It's about forming, it's about in, in, imparting values, um, you, you know, uh, passing on belief systems, you know, instilling priorities and principles. That's what education is. That's what education has always been and always will be, and it will never, ever change. We have this fantasy of objectivity. Like, we think it's possible that, we think it's possible for there to be a truly objective, unbiased news source. And what we learn is, it's impossible. And the news media, for as long as it's existed, has always been biased because there are human beings behind it. There are human beings passing on the information and they have views and ideas and priorities. And that's inevitably going to come out. Well, even more, that's even more the case for, uh, for, for education. That there's going to be an agenda, an objective beyond just putting information in their heads. These are people, after all, who are doing the educating. And these are people who run the schools. And they all have belief systems and ideas and everything else. Um, And they're also operating, very importantly here, they're operating within a system that itself is certainly not objective. A system that itself has uh, an agenda in mind. So that even, and there are plenty of very good public school teachers, uh, plenty of devout Christian public school teachers, conservatives, religious, you know, public school teachers, but, and, um, and many of them work heroically to stand against the tide. But the fact remains that, that it, that there is a tide and they are standing against it. And those kinds of teachers, they are, you know, if you send your kid to public school, those teachers are very, those are, those are like oases in, in the desert, um, an oasis of sanity and reason that your kid might, might come across, which is great. But that's not how the system in general is set up. And so we just have to ask ourselves, is this the uh, environment that we want to put our kids in? And it is very possible. I don't deny it. It's very possible that you could send your child uh, if you're a religious person, if you're a conservative, if you care about so-called family values, um, objective reality, objective, objective truth, objective morality, um, all that kind of stuff, you could send your kid into public, public school. And it's quite possible, although I think probably unlikely, but it is possible that they could come out on the other end with their head still screwed on straight and with all of those values still basically intact. But if they accomplish that, it will be in spite of their education. And in spite of the environment, the atmosphere they've been immersed in for the last 12, 13 years. And so what we have to ask ourselves is, 
Is that fair to our kids? That we expect them to be good people in spite of their education. When in truth, they should be good people, good, decent, normal, healthy people, in part because of their education. Education is supposed to strengthen you. It's not supposed to be a necessary evil. It's not supposed to be an obstacle for a kid to get around or over or climb over. It's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be a, a, an advantage. It's supposed to be a, a, a good thing that, that helps a kid, boosts him up. Not something that drags him down so that he's constantly trying to climb and resist it and all that. I think that's something we really need to think about. But then ultimately make our own decisions. And if you happen to send your kid to that middle school in, um, in, uh, in Colorado, I hope, certainly hope that you will demand, even if fruitlessly, you will still demand and never stop demanding that every single person responsible for bringing that drag queen in is fired. Um, because that's what needs to happen there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening. Godspeed.